Right, good morning from Buriram, Thailand, and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan, the channel where we share all of your Thailand stories. Today, we have a subscriber that's fell for a girl that he met on Tinder in Bangkok. She's got a couple of kids, she's divorced, and he doesn't see any red flags whatsoever and he's applied for a visa. So without further delay, let's jump into today's Thailand story and see if we can help this guy out. Hi Dan, I came across your channel and loved your thought-provoking videos and subscribed. Keep up the fantastic work. I recently had a stopover for a few days in Thailand on my way back to Australia from a well-earned USA holiday. I had every intention of not leaving Bangkok and just having a few days relaxation and maybe extra activities if I was that way inclined. But the extra was never the purpose or priority. Bye, 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 come on. Now, the second day into my stay, I was contacted by a Thai lady on Tinder, forgot I even had Tinder on, and agreed to meet the next day in a shopping mall in central Bangkok, close to my accommodation. Convenient. So, we met. Her English was good enough to have a conversation, albeit a clunky one, until I tuned into her accent and she told me she was living in a dormitory room and working in Rangsit. Now this province is north of Bangkok, which I have been to, so she could grab some things. I had no set plans. My accommodation was a very generous two stars and peeing me off. So the decision was made to relocate to Rangsit to be closer to her. Good luck. She stayed with me in my accommodation, which was across the road from her place of work. She went to work while I put my feet up and chilled for a couple of days. Then she took a couple of days off work and we hung out before I left to go back home. We have maintained contact after I left Thailand and I think we have gotten to know each other quite well. She is university educated, divorced, has an 11 year old daughter and 13 year old son with her ex-husband and I understand that they both live with him. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I know Dan. The usual script to a T I bet. She appears to have been employed most of the time in good jobs and due to COVID currently works as a therapist in a cosmetics retail outlet doing therapeutic facial massage and beauty treatments. It came up in a conversation about coming to Australia on a tourist visa for a visit and we talked about it and the decision was made to submit an application for a visa and see what happens. I was to be her sponsor and support her while she is here and we are currently awaiting the visa decision. Now, every time I thought there was a red flag, I have done some digging, questioned her discreetly, screenshot conversations, and done multiple things to try and uncover a possible scam and every time she has come up squeaky clean. Run. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Her employment is genuine. I have photos of her at work, video chatted while she is at work, I have seen her work appointment book, seen her place of employment, 
seen her work certificate stating her income. I have a copy of her passport, identity card, university graduation, children's names in visa application, and her personal details from birth until now. And unbeknown to her, when she approached her employer for work certificate as part of the visa application, they told her she had to resign as they cannot allow her to be gone for up to three months and keep her position open for her. Now, I have gifted her some jewellery while I was in Thailand with all the knowledge that I will never see that coin again or that she may one day sell it for cash. I even thought she might have had a thing going with the jewellery shop to inflate the price just for me and then split the takings. However, the price of gold and receipts are legit. She also still has the jewellery. Nice. I have even knocked her back a few times when she asked for financial assistance and then suggested she sell the jewellery she had prior to meeting me. Now, when I have knocked her back on provided BART, she's agreed and never mentioned it again. She is very reserved and quiet, does not have a single tattoo, never saw her drink alcohol, is all about clean, healthy diet and living. She loves cooking. Social media is nothing but cooking and food and positive self-help stuff. Am I correct to understand that Thai culture tends to steer the local gents away from divorced mothers? If so, this would explain her social life or perceived lack of one. She works 10 hours a day, six days a week with Mondays off. She goes to the local shrine weekly to pray for a successful visa decision and has occasionally sent photos. Anyway, I could go on and on and on, but getting to the point, I have no idea if I am lining myself up for an elaborate scam or not. At the moment, it all seems very genuine. In my line of work, I deal with all kinds of people who try to pull one over on you often. And in the end, I usually catch them out one way or another. <laughs> Suffice to say, I am well aware of the lengths that some Thai women will go to to create the scam and my work and past experience with some women in general has led me to be very wary and in this case constantly on the lookout for red flags that might indicate a scam is on short of hiring a PI to do some looking for me. I know I control my purse strings and it's very hard for anyone to separate me from my coin. I've worked long and hard for it and others have tried. But frankly, I'm sick of selfish, shallow Western women who think they are the be all that ends all. What are your thoughts? Cheers, mate. Shane. Right, Shane. Firstly, thank you for sending in your Thailand story and the situation that you're in right now. Now, for me, what I would be asking myself is this. You met her on Tinder in Bangkok. How long has she had that application? How many other men is she speaking to? Is she still speaking to other men? Has she had other foreign relationships in the past? Has she received a monthly salary from those relationships in the past? What does she want from the future? You know, at the end of the day, she's a divorced woman with two kids that's working. However, those kids don't live with her. They live with the father. Now, you didn't mention why, and that is a big question. At the end of the day, when a woman can leave the children with the father, um, it's a difficult thing for most mothers to do. Um, you never mentioned how long she's seen those kids 
for? Did she see, does she see them at weekends? Does she see them every couple of weeks? Because that would help me understand the kind of woman that she is in regards to her work. What does she spend her money on? Does she send a certain amount of money to her family? Yeah. How much does she spend on special items for herself? Is she dressed up in the finest labels and the nice bags and her children are dressed in rags? These are the things that I would be going through my head and wanting answers for. Um, she does sound, in the way that you've stated about her, that she, she does sound nice. It sounds like you do have a good Thai woman. But you also mentioned that she asked for money sometimes, uh, but never went on and on about it. Now, what was the stories, you know, that she made up in regards to why she needed the money? How much was the money that she was asking for? This would also help understand what kind of woman she is. Now, you seem to have gone quite fast into this relationship, very, very fast. You've applied for a visa. Now, what I would personally do first is spend a couple of weeks living with her in Thailand at least and trying to get to know her because you never get to know um, a person unless you live with them and spend time with them. You'll find out if she's moody, if she gets angry, if, she get, if she's quite negative. You know, when people first start dating, they put on this fake charade of who they want to be and the type of person they want to portray to the girl to make that girl like them, yeah? A lot of guys do this and I think a lot of females do it as well. So that means that you don't truly know who they are. So you have to spend that time with them. The last thing that you want to do is bring her back to your country. You're the sponsor and you're stuck with her and, you have it, and you're having to deal with all that garbage uh, back in your own home country and it's just a nightmare that you don't want to fall into. So in summary, I mean, you've already applied for the visa. There's no stopping you now. As long as you're guarded with your money like you said you are, you know, you're not frivolous with it. You keep it in your pocket. You don't allow her to use any stories in order to get any money from you. Then I suppose, yeah, enjoy it, but keep your guard up because you're moving way too fast. So the only thing that you need to protect, if, if you're already protecting your money, you just need to protect your own emotions and just don't allow her to get into your head too much. Stay guarded, but not too guarded because you need to enjoy yourself and just see what happens because you're already kind of in the thick of it and there probably isn't no stopping you now. Ain't no stopping me now. I've got my Thai girl. Woohoo. Anyway, if you want to share your own Thailand story on the channel and share it with everybody, get some advice or whatever you need or warn other people, then get your emails sent in to thaitalkwithdan at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Apart from that, take it easy. It's the start of a brand new week. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.